Hi, my name is Fluffy Bunny, and this video is a guide to laws in Old World. So if you don't know, Old World is the latest 4X strategy game from Mohawk Games. Um, and this is, yeah, just going to talk about laws. What are they? How do you get them? Which ones should you pick? So essentially, laws are policies that you can enact that give your nation bonuses, and occasionally negatives as well. Um, there's 30 different laws in the game, which you can see on this screen here. Uh, they all come in pairs. So you can only enact one of the pair. So I can either have slavery or freedom, but not both at once. So 30 different laws, each in a pair. So you can have a maximum of 15 laws active at any one time. So yeah, each law pair requires a technology to have been researched to unlock it. So in this example, we've got epics and exploration both require rhetoric, which is a technology you can research. Uh, and that's the same for every law. Uh, every law also needs 400 civics to enact the first time you enact. And that's the little hammer icon, which is, you can see up here, your civics rate. So you need 400 civics to enact a law for the first time. If you then want to change that law, once you've got it in place, that will also cost you civics. First time you change a law, it will cost you 300. And that goes up by 100 every time you change it. So it's not something you want to be doing too often uh, unless there's a particularly good reason for it. Generally, you want to pick the law you want and stick with it. Um, it's quite a lot of civics to enact and to change laws, and they are quite precious. So you don't want to waste them if you can help it. Uh, just worth noting, there are a couple of ways to reduce the cost of laws. So you can build the pyramids, which will reduce the start cost of a law by 50%, taking it down to 200 for your first law doesn't make any difference to changing a law it's only the first time you enact it you also have a, a leader with the judge archetype will reduce the switching cost of laws by 50 percent so kind of the opposite effect of pyramids won't help you uh, reduce the cost of enacting a law the first time but if you then want to switch a judge will make that cheaper so that can make it a bit more attractive to get a judge leader if you particularly want to be switching laws around a lot so this is the law screen. You open that by clicking this button here. It's uh, F4 is the shortcut for it. It's the fourth button along on the top bar. And as you can see, the icon is actually flashing at the moment. And that will flash whenever there is a law available to be activated. Just as a little reminder, a little prompt. What you'll also see is you will, uh, the first time you can enact a law, you'll get a little pop-up, event pop-up saying, do you want to enact this law or this law? And the options here are you can you can enact over the laws. You can say, no, we're not going to do anything. Or you can say the court will choose the laws. And essentially, that all that does is it just opens the law screen. And you can either choose the law you want from here or just close it. Um, what I would recommend is you always go to court, court will choose the laws or nothing and then open it yourself later. This screen gives you some information tells you the civic cost and the headline effects of the laws so in this case 400 civics plus four hordes a year plus one discontent a year what it doesn't tell you if you go to the law screen you can also see it also gives you a positive opinion opinion bonus for builders characters um which doesn't it doesn't doesn't get shown on that tooltip and some of the later laws most of the later laws also have an upkeep cost which isn't shown on there. So just, just to go over those. Um, so yeah, each law can have a an opinion bonus, either for a certain archetype, like a hero, um, or for a family, like, uh, where's an example of family? Sages, sages are a family. So for example, if you give, if you enact freedom, the sages will have a, an opinion, sages family will have an opinion boost. If you attack, enact slavery every builder character will have an opinion boost of you um so yeah the family the fact families um the archetypes affect every character with that archetype so that's potentially quite useful it's, it's generally a more minor effect than the the headline effect of the law but it's it's something worth considering so uh, that's the opinion basis. The upkeep's also worth talking about. So the first three law pairs here on the top line don't have any upkeep cost. After that, every law starts costing you some amount of resources per year, and that's per per year per city. 
So it's generally either civics, training or money. Or there are a couple of laws that cost you orders and even one that costs you some science. So they start off quite low. So one civics per year per city is not very much, although that can add up when you get a lot of cities. When you get down to the later game laws, you're talking about 10 money, five training, four civics a year per city. So if you've got 40, um, 10 cities, sorry, that's 40 civics a year for one of these laws, which is quite a considerable cost. So definitely worth bearing that in mind. So just to go over the different laws and what we've got. So um, as I said, they're, they're all in pairs and they're kind of listed in tech order. So the top ones are the earliest ones you will probably get to and the, the lowest line are the later ones. You won't necessarily get to these strictly in, in order as it's based on the tech tree and the tech tree is relatively free. You can you know, potentially get to some very late game laws without unlocking some earlier ones, but they're roughly in, in, a, in a sensible order. So uh, first one we've got is epics. So you get 10 culture, that's the culture symbol, per military unit killed in the nearest city. So whenever one of your units kills someone, the nearest city will get 10 culture. That can be very useful uh, if you're doing a lot of fighting, and you generally will be at least fighting barbarians and tribes in the early game. Then that can stack up fairly quickly, get you a, um, a decent amount of culture in the city. Also gives you a hero opinion boost, which is nice if you're playing a, na a nation with a lot of heroes. Exploration. No extra unit consumption with that when outside borders. So units normally consume resources. So for example, a slinger will cost you a stone every turn in upkeep and a warrior will cost you an iron. That's normally increased by 50% when that unit is outside your national borders. Uh, and exploration takes away that uh, extra cost, which is quite nice. Uh, scouts move on water, very handy if you're on a heavily water-based map and you want to go and explore. So generally, I would recommend epics um, for the culture, unless you particularly want the um, the scouts move on water ability, which can be handy for some maps. Um, the extra unit consumption is nice, but not hugely relevant. Next, we have slavery versus freedom. So slavery gives you four orders a year. So orders are essentially your actions, what you'll need an order if you want to do anything in this game and you will generally be short of orders so it's a very powerful law and it's counteracted by the fact that all cities get an extra discontent per year so this is one of the very few laws that actually has a penalty it's not just a straight up advantage freedom on the other hand gives all cities one science a year per urban specialist and two culture in the capital now this is quite an interesting law set um, because uh, looking at the analytics, you can see that about 72% of players choose freedom over slavery. And I think there's a few reasons for that. You know, slavery has a straight up penalty. It's also thematically and from role playing perspective, perhaps not the most attractive choice. Um, and freedom gives you extra science. Science is always good, right? The trouble is one science per urban specialist is not a huge amount until you have a decent amount of urban specialists which you're not going to have a lot of in the early game if you are building specialists that they tend to be rules um you won't get a lot of urban buildings till later in the game and four orders is just huge you know you need orders to do everything so i would personally i would always pick slavery especially early in the game, you know, and maybe make a case for switching to freedom later in the game when your order count goes up and you've got a lot more urban specialists to make, make use of that science. Moving on, we've got centralization or vassalage. Centralization gives you 10 civics and a small science boost in your capital city. I say small, it's 20%. Generally, your cities won't be making a huge amount of science, again, until later in the game. A lot of early science comes from characters in this game. So that is not perhaps as huge a science boost as it might look like. Tens of a year is okay, but given that laws cost 400 civics, that's 40 years to pay back, which is not particularly attractive. Vassalage, on the other hand, gives you minus 50% unit consumption. Again, that's halving the consumption of all of your units, 
regardless of the, if they're inside or outside borders, um, which is also not huge unless you've got a, a massive army, but is it can be quite nice, it can, especially if you've got archers or ships that are costing you wood and you don't have a lot of wood to spare, that can be quite useful. Tyranny and Constitution is next, and again this is one of these lopsided laws, most people will take Constitution, I personally very much favour Tyranny. So Tyranny gives you extra training a year, extra 20 training a year, which is quite good by itself, and then every military unit in your territory gives you 8 money a year, which is great, makes military units pay for themselves. You are going to want a decent standing army, even if you're not fighting people, you're going to have to fend off tribes and potentially um, raiders and rebels. So yeah, tyranny is a good one to have, I would suggest. The other option is constitution, gives you a lesser amount of gold per specialist, um, which can be very nice if you're going for a much more peaceful uh, specialist heavy economy, then constitution can be better in those cases. It also unlocks decrees in the capital. Decrees are a project that gives you extra orders as a one-off uh, when you build them, uh, which can be quite useful. Uh, then we've got Colonies and Serfdom. Colonies lets you buy tiles, which is huge. So basically, there are a few ways of expanding your borders in the game, um, generally by building urban buildings or rural specialists. Um, but Colonies will let you straight up buy tiles. Basically, what you do is you move your unit move any unit to a tile adjacent to your borders and you'll just get an option to pop up and buy it and the cost of that starts off very cheap it's just a small amount of money it does get more expensive the more tiles you buy and the further away you get from your um the center of your city but um yeah very powerful uh also gives you a movement bonus on neutral river so basically any rivers not in your territory You'll, um, your units will move faster, which can be quite useful depending on the map. Um, I should mention upkeep as well, so this costs you... Uh, excuse me a moment. Um, right, this costs you two training a year. And going back to tyranny, costs you civics, and constitution costs you training. So, yeah, basically this is very much a boosting your military and this is costing you military to boost your economy uh but yeah Connolly's bank tiles is great moving bonus along neutral river is not bad serfdom farms and pastures plus 20 percent output i don't massively value that um you get some extra growth it's probably particularly good for persia which gets bonus orders from pastures um, boosting that by another 20% is quite nice um, but I would generally suggest colonies is the better pick there monotheism polytheism uh, religion laws so monotheism will only give you a benefit if you have a state religion if you have a state religion you'll get an extra order per year for every city with that state religion which can be very useful if you have a lot of, of cities with that state religion but if you don't, then you probably don't want that. Polytheism lets you build each shrine in every city. Now, what this means is that normally you would be limited. Basically, every nation gets four different shrines they can build. And normally you can only build one shrine of each type in the entire empire. So you could have all of those four different types of shrines in one city, or you could spread them out between four different cities. What polytheism lets you do is essentially you can build all four of those shrines in every city. Uh, you're not, it takes away the limitation of, of one, one shrine type per nation, which can be very useful. Shrines can be very good. It depends on what nation you're playing. Some nations are better than others um, for shrines. But yeah, that's a pretty solid law. So yeah, an interesting choice there. And again, it depends on the game. Probably if you've got a lot of state religion cities, monotheism is better. But if you've got the stone to build lots of shrines and you're playing a nation with good shrines, then polytheism can work very well too. 
Moving on, divine law versus legal code. So divine law lets you adopt pagan state religions and all your shrines give you minus one discontent. So obviously divine rule pairs quite well with polytheism. If you're building four shrines in every city and each shrine is giving you minus one discontent, that can be a huge discontent reduction. And not so good if you don't have polytheism because you won't get a huge amount of benefit from that. Can adopt pagan state religions. You probably don't want to do that unless you don't have a national religion, um, because there are, there are less benefits from pagan state religions. Pagan state religions can't have disciples. Um, they don't. They can't enact um, theologies, which are, are quite powerful. So, it, unless you're really desperate for a state religion, uh, and again, you could pair that with monotheism. If you wanted to get a lot of shrines out, what can be quite nice is using polytheism to build shrines everywhere, then switching to monotheism and divine rule will give you, um, basically make your uh, pagan state religion in every city and get you an extra order per city, which can be quite good. On the other hand, you have legal code which gets you 10 civics a year per active law, which is, is pretty good, especially later in the game when you're getting like seven or eight laws, you're, a hefty civics income. It will pay for itself very quickly. Uh, the, the big downside of that is this costs orders per term, only 0.2 per city, but still, that's not ideal. You definitely want orders where you can get them. Still, that is a lot of civics, and they are very useful. Moving on, tolerance can build non-state religion disciples. So normally you would be limited to only being able to build disciples in either the holy city of that religion or any city uh, with that religion where it's also the state religion. This lets you build them anywhere. And this gives reduces discontent per non-state religion. So essentially this is great if you don't have a state religion or you have a lot of different religions and you want to be able to spread them around a bit and get a discontent um, bonus from that. that works quite well orthodoxies is very much uh focused on having a state religion so disciples can purge world religions so if a religion has spread to one of your cities that really uh, doesn't like you perhaps you're at war with the holy uh holy city the place that founded that religion you might want to purge it. It's not something I, honestly I've ever done. Um, state religion cities can hurry specialists with orders. That's potentially quite useful. You're not always going to have orders to spare. You're not often going to have orders to spare. But the ability to hurry is always nice. So if you're particularly, especially if you're trying to rush for an ambition, for example, that requires you to have a certain amount of elder specialists, then that can be quite useful, assuming you have a state religion. Uh, moving on, professional army. Extra XP for all units during combat. Always good. All cities get an extra two training per treasury. Again, solid training boost. Treasuries generally not massively worth building, but professional army can make it so. Um, it's... Yeah, two training is not a huge boost at this point in the game, but it's it's not bad either. Volunteers gives you an extra 20 global training per war, which can stack up nicely if you've got a lot of wars going. Uh, but the headline for this really is hurrying production with population. So essentially any um, citizens you've got lying around who you haven't turned into specialists, you can sacrifice them to hurry any production, which can be massively useful especially if you're uh, at war and desperate for a few more units, you can um, convert your idle people into um, into units, which is great. Um, and again, this is this is going to depend on, on where you are. Um, if you've got a lot of wars on and you need units, then volunteers is great. If you're uh, happy to build up a bit more steadily, then uh, you might want professional army. And in some cases, of course, you, you don't necessarily have to choose these laws as soon as they become available. You might, even if you can afford the civics cost, you might want to save the civics for something else. So um, 
it's definitely worth considering whether the benefits you're getting are worth that 400 civic cost. Um, yeah. So moving on, we've got philosophy. Minus 20% production time for urban specialists. It's quite nice. Uh, pairs quite well with freedom. because Of course, you get uh, science from urban specialists. So that will help you um, boost up your science rate. And you also get science per forum, um, which is okay. Forums, again, are not hugely worth building, but with philosophy and um, I think there's a wonder that gives you an extra bonus per forum as well. Um, that can combine quite nicely. Engineering, minus 25% wonder costs. Not bad if you want to build some wonders. And minus one year to build improvements is always amazing. That's, um, yeah, your workers are just going to build everything quicker. Just going to um, keep your economy spiraling upwards. Iconography. All cities, you get a monastery, gets you plus two training. Cathedral gets you minus two discontent and a temple gets you plus ten money. Uh, I would say out of that, the monastery getting you plus two training is really the most useful um, useful part of that bonus, which is not bad at all. You do get no random non-state religion spread. So essentially you only want this if you've got one state religion and you don't want any others. Otherwise, that's potentially a negative because you might want more non-state religions, especially if you're going you know, tolerance or one of those other laws that gives you bonuses for that. Uh, the alternative is calligraphy. Libraries give you plus four culture, which is a moderate boost. It's not bad. Minus one discontent per year for elder specialist. Elder specialists are quite difficult to get to. They require quite a lot of investment. Um, but if you have invested in elder specialists, then yeah, that can be quite a nice discontent we can um discontent reduction boost. So next we've got pilgrimage and holy law. So pilgrimage gets you plus two science per grove. Uh, grove is let's just look at the tooltip for groves. So that's citrus, honey, intense lavender, olives, and wine. So any of those um Resources that you've built an improvement on will get you an extra two science. Potentially not too bad. Again, it's going to depend on the map and how many of those types of resources you've got. Holy City will also get you plus five money per cities with religion. Uh, so that's a, a moderate money boost if you've been spreading your religion around a fair amount. Holy War, on the other hand, will get you plus one random information for new units. So every new unit you build will have an extra random promotion which is fantastic and state religion cities can hurry units with money so basically if you've got a nice money stockpile you can just boot out units very quickly in your state religion cities which is fantastic i would definitely suggest getting that if you can it does cost you science a year which is not ideal but um yeah if you're in a hot war and you want some good new units quickly that is a fantastic law to take uh, moving down to the last line, we've got guilds versus elites. So guilds, towns give you minus one discontent, and all cities get less rebels. So this is quite nice. The minus 10% rebels chance is quite nice if you've got unhappy families, because law um, rebels can spawn uh, if your families are unhappy, and they can be very painful, especially if you've got a lot of unhappy family cities and not enough military in place to deal with them. So I'd say that's a very good um, choice in that case. Towns, minus one discontent, they're okay. I tend not to build too many towns, but if you've got a lot of them and uh, you're worried about discontent, then that can be uh, useful. Elites, store 100 orders per year between years. So essentially that means if you have spare orders at the end of a turn, normally they're sold off for gold. Elites means that you they don't get sold for gold. You can just store them up. And you can store, yeah, as it says, up to 100 plus whatever you then produce the next turn. So you can build a massive stockpile of orders, which can be useful if you um, if you want to have one big turn. Generally, if you're um, starting a war or launching a big offensive front and you want to be able to move all of your military units, then that can be very useful for that. Plus two orders per legendary city. 
mean, if you've got legendary cities, then yes, that is quite a nice bonus as well. Um, autarky. All cities, mine, quarries, and lumber mills get plus 20%. It's a pretty good boost, although it's very late in the game at this point. So, you know, this is one of the, the later game laws. So it's probably not massively relevant at that point. All cities can build units that require horses, camels, and elephants. Can be quite useful if you if you've gone for cataphracts, the um, the latest horse unit, and you don't have a lot of horses in your cities. That can be quite nice for for popping them out quickly. Again, this will cost you a lot of science per year, so that's definitely a, a big trade off. Trade League unlocks convoy. Now convoy is an interesting project on completion it gives you money and discontent reduction and you get an extra science a year for every kind of way you've done it's okay um it's not an amazing project but it's all right the main point of trade league is that you can sell for the same price as buying so just to explain that a little bit on the resource market you can normally every resource has a price which at the moment is four for wood which means you can buy one wood for four or you can sell one wood for two. So you always sell at half the price of what you buy for. Trade League means you can sell for the same price as buying, so you'll be able to sell a wood for four. So if you want a lot of money and you've got a lot of spare resources, that can be uh, very good. So that would be, for example, a very good one to pair with Holy War. You're hurrying units with money. You can sell a lot of your um, resources for a much much more money than you would otherwise and buy units with them using holy war and finally we have coin debasement or monetary reforms a coin debasement you can buy or sell orders so that essentially you can buy more orders for money which is obviously incredibly powerful um if you if you've got the economy for it you can um essentially break the game and and do whatever you want on the turn rather than being order limited this is obviously a very late game uh, policy law, um, but yeah, very powerful. Monetary reform, lose discontent a year and lose no discontent with mirroring. It's okay. If you're particularly concerned about getting your discontent down, it might be worth doing. It does cost you one order per city, so I'd say that's not very attractive. You're probably better off sticking with going to basement. And that are all the laws. Um, so just a couple of extra points about laws as I said earlier you might not always want to enact a law immediately when it's possible civics are used for uh, a few other things mainly rushing units uh, and you might very well want to rush some units more than you want to enact a law in the short term in the longer term generally you will want to enact a law um, although they do have upkeep costs they're generally outweighed by the um the benefits you get <clears throat> excuse me again um right so just to wrap up this video um yeah laws are very powerful um you probably want to enact them when you can but not necessarily immediately uh the other thing to note about laws is that you will need um one law enabled to build a garrison which lets you have a governor in a city you'll need four laws enabled in order to build a stronghold which lets you build your first level unique unit for your nation and you'll need seven laws enabled in order to build a citadel which lets you build your second level unique unit so you even if you don't necessarily want a law for the benefits it gives you it can sometimes be worth taking it just for the ability to um, unlock your unique units and rushing four laws is uh can be a, a quite a good tactic in order to get um get your unique unit uh, which is often more powerful than anything else you can build at the time it becomes available just a quick look at the research screen a lot of the laws are especially a lot of the early laws are um weighted in the tree so uh of the early laws you've got labor force will give you a law as will aristocracy and rhetoric uh sovereignty will give you another law 
as does navigation. So it's very much the top of the tree and the bottom of the tree you want to be aiming for if you're getting lures. Uh, a good trick if you want to get your unique units out quickly, you want four lures. The best path for that is to get a labor force because you want slavery as soon as possible for the extra orders and then sovereignty because that will get you a law here, a law here, and a law here. Plus, you can then research the civics boost to get you 800 civics, which will let you actually enact those laws. So, yeah, sovereignty and labor force is a, is a good way to get those four early laws to get your unique unit out. Uh, I think that's all I have to say about laws. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any extra questions or things I think I missed or just want to discuss the relative merits of a law. And um, yeah, we'll be back soon with, uh, with more. Thanks for watching.